Hello, everyone. This is Chris Kopeck with the University of Arizona, Assistant Vice President of Facilities Management, also our current APA president. Uh, today we have an outstanding topic, uh, Daryl Boyce, uh, Assistant Vice President, Facilities Management and Planning from Carleton University, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Uh, also, Daryl is currently the Treasurer of ASHRAE and will be the President-Elect and President in the very near future. Uh, APA and ASHRAE have just an outstanding collaboration, a partnership that continues flourishing on many fronts, and one of them is on the overall education of our staff especially as we're having so many so many of our staff retiring over the next 10 years. Uh, today's presentation will be ASHRAE's Building EQ program and relevant educational programs that ASHRAE and APA have just recently partnered together uh, to provide at the APA Institute that will be held September uh, 2018. Uh, as other uh, webinars, these, uh, we must have hit a nerve here because these are definitely giving back to our members. We're having hundreds of folks dial in on these each time, so we appreciate you taking the time. Uh, we will uh, have a usual 40 to 45 minutes presentation uh, with questions to follow for 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, you can type in your questions throughout the presentation, and as always, we will have the audio and also the PowerPoint presentation posted on APA's webpage. Uh, usually it takes about a week uh, after the presentation is done. So without further ado, Daryl Boyce, thank you very much for taking the time uh, in enlightening our members on ASHRAE's Building EQ program. Well, thank you, and uh, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Hopefully I can uh, present some information that will be of use to uh, you and your organization. Uh, so I'll just get right into it. Uh, so uh, our webinar is intended to uh, talk about the ASHRAE's Building Energy Quotient Program. Give a quick analysis that compares uh, your building to similar buildings in the same climate. And there are really two options of the program that are available. One. Uh, focuses on a building that's in operation, uh, which is talking about actual building energy use to similar buildings. And the other one is as designed, which would be something you would do as you're in the process of designing a building. Um, we're going to focus primarily on the in operation methodology today, uh, as it more directly relates to the uh, huge number of buildings that uh, our sector manages uh, day to day. And the Building EQ can help identify means to improve your building's energy performance and provide data on indoor air quality. This presentation will provide details on how to use the BEQ program and help you move forward with improving your own buildings. So after attending this presentation, participants will be able to understand how BEQ rating applies to building energy use. Uh, we'll explain the features of the Building EQ portal. It's sort of the uh, new enhanced uh, method to access the uh, system. Uh, use the Building EQ performance score to differentiate energy performance in buildings and explain the characteristics of the system and the actionable, actionable energy recommendations that come out of the process. We'll also describe how building EQ process standardizes modeling so that comparisons can be meaningful. So what's it all about? It's, it's rating your building's efficiency, comparing your building to similar buildings with the same climate. It's also about improving your building's energy performance and gives you a, a, a list of actions that uh, can be taken uh, to either improve the design or the in operation of your of your buildings. Uh, this is all powered by ASHRAE. It rests on the ASHRAE methodologies and standards and experience of credentialed practitioners uh, for reliable and consistent results. As I said, there's two separate ratings in operation as design. Uh, the as designed uh, allows uh, you to look at an asset and the in-operation allows you to look at the operational ratings of your facilities. Now, this system will actually complement other building rating and labeling programs. Uh, it can allow for voluntary rating and also uh, actual labeling of your facilities as well. 
The benefits are it helps building owners make informed decisions about managing their building portfolios. It assists in the preparation of an ASHRAE Level 1 energy audit, and it's fundamentally based on uh, a lot of the useful information is based on that ASHRAE Level 1 energy audit. And through that, it identifies actionable recommendations, uh, estimated of co estimations of costs out of the audit and payback ranges for energy improvements through retrofits, modifications to maintenance and upgrades. Uh, provides the credentialed practitioner with a consistent methodology to follow and provides the building owner with easily understood and applied information. So what is the value of BEQ? Uh, building EQ provides a framework for realizing energy improvements. The greatest value that we believe is in streamlining of the energy audit process, providing actionable recommendations for improving building energy performance, documentation of assessments and results, and a building label to recognize high performance. That's an option to get the label out the end. On the long term, it's the ability to assess effectiveness of energy management initiatives uh, after implementation. So you can do an ongoing evaluation and track how well you're improving the operation and indoor environment of your building. Current USA and Canada labeling efforts, there's the EPA Energy Star, DOE Commercial Building Energy Asset Score, USGBC LEED, a GBI Green Globes, OMA 360 in the United States, OMA Best in Canada, and there are a number of other state and local building energy reporting disclosure ordinances. Our, our plan is to have all, all this uh, building EQ integrate well with those systems. So in operation rating, Assessment of actual energy performance with existing characteristics and how it is operated. So you actually have the chance to have a, a professional look at the building, look how it's performing, and what are the characteristics of how that is operated. Generally, it's based on metered energy use in a building. Uh, we do know that in the institutional environment, sometimes the metered energy use is not available for all energy sources used in the building. Uh, so you can actually do some uh, spot metering and, and model the energy use, uh, but the most powerful is based on actual metered energy use. Uh, confirmation of the indoor environment quality is not compromised for energy savings. Uh, it does an on-site assessment with actionable recommendations for improving energy performance and is applicable for buildings after at least 12 months of operation. The as design rating is assessment of energy performance potential based on buildings physical characteristics and systems independent of building occupancy and operating conditions based on results of a standardized energy model as compared to a baseline is applicable to both new and existing buildings so you can actually model an existing building uh, and find out where it would fit in terms of the standard baseline for that type of a building So if you compare the two rating options uh, in operation rating, you actually look at actual metered energy consumption, and it is influenced by operational occupancy variables, how, you, how your people are operating the building and how the occupants are interacting with the building, uh, can be improved by upgrading building fabric systems or operating procedures, whereas the as design rating is simulated standardized energy use, independent of operational occupancy variables slash impact and improved only by upgrading building fabric or systems on the basis that it should improve the energy utilization of the building. Now, what is a building EQ performance score? So building EQ tracks a building's energy performance with the building performance score. The score compares the candidate building's EUI to a baseline EUI for the building type. So you'll have your own energy utilization index for your building and you'll compare it to a baseline and you'll multiply that by 100 and it gives you a uh, energy performance score. And you can see in the uh, lower here, building energy performance score of 77, uh, source EUI is 186. So this actually gives you ability to uh, compare your building to a, a baseline of other buildings in a similar uh, utilization. 
So the rating scale is based on building performance score. Excellent is set to zero net energy. So the best building that you can rate is one that has uh, zero net energy utilization. So it generates as much energy as it uses. A score below zero for net energy producing buildings. It's generally where the bulk of the buildings will be. And the average is set to US medium EUI for existing buildings of that building type uh, with uh, weather um, zone adjustments. So scores exceeding 100 for buildings with higher than average energy use. So an inefficient building would, would score a larger number and an efficient building would score the smaller number. In this case, as you can see in the graph, we've got an inoperation of 50. So that's a pretty good building and uh, a very inefficient building. The, the, the least efficient building uh, would rate a score of 200. So the rating is range, you can see it here, uh, uh, zero at net zero, and, and there's a one to 25 score range for 75 to 99% energy savings over median. And uh, so that there's a, a set to, uh, to sort of measure your variance from that median energy use in your climate zone. So, um, just a bit of background here. When we first started off with the building EQ, uh, it was all paper-based. So you had to fill out these spreadsheets and send them into ASHRAE headquarters. They would bundle them all up and, and uh, do the analysis. Uh, we've been working over the last couple of years actually to uh, create a web portals that will actually support the online data entry and analysis of the, all this information that's uh, required to get a building EQ rating. So the web portal for in-operation rating was launched in November 2017, so it's pretty fresh. Uh, and if you're using it and you, you find any things that uh, don't seem to be right, then we definitely want you to uh, contact our staff and uh, we'll look into it. And the web portal for as designed was just launched uh, this month, so it's uh, very fresh. Um, so what have we got? We've got uh, 350 new signups, 144 projects in the system, 164 in the terms of buildings, and 152 average site EUIs. So what this means is as we start to build up the number of buildings uh, and building types that will really enhance our, our system effectiveness in terms of rating your building compared to other buildings in that in your climate zone um, that are of a similar use, similar construction and use. So the, as we move along, the system is, is definitely uh, getting much more comprehensive and robust. So as I said, we get an online data entry and submission process. Um, metered energy data exchange from portfolio manager. If you already use portfolio manager, then that, that, so you can set up a data exchange. The medium EUI calculation is aligned with Energy Star. So we're pretty comprehensive with Energy Star. Reports can be automatically generated by credentialed users. And there's a much improved submission approval process with help and validation built in. Uh, so it's, it's a much, uh, much improved system. Uh, we've also redesigned the, the label award with letter grades eliminated. Uh, so you'll just get the numeric score. And we've customized reporting capabilities are in development. Uh, we're getting feedback on that and, and continuing to develop. So to use the BEQ portal, you just create a, a login and password to register as a user. Uh, the menu on the left-hand side of the screen is used to navigate around the portal, so dashboard account, project user. Uh, you set up an account to manage users and projects, and you can create a project to begin entering building data. Projects must be submitted by a credentialed practitioner for the building official EQ rating, but anybody can enter the data, uh, and then as long as it's submitted by a, a credentialed practitioner. And we'll get into who that is in a minute. Um, data input screens, uh, we think they're pretty um, 
easy to utilize. Uh, they're, they're really built, arranged around tabs and accordions. And so that you, you pick whether you're doing the building demographics, climate information, building characteristics, and then uh, you, you fill in the, uh, the information in those various tabs. So it's, uh, it, it's quite a comprehensive system and, and uh, we truly do hope it's uh, user friendly. So once you've got this data in, what comes out? Uh, building EQ performance score, available to all users. So you can put your data in and you'll get a score. Uh, user input report is available to all submissions. A building EQ label report is available for all submissions. Uh, disclosure form will be coming soon for approved submissions. And an audit report, audit report spreadsheets will also be coming soon for approved submissions. And the building EQ database, this comprehensive database I was talking about earlier, is under development and really the the most important piece of that is getting more buildings into the database uh, to have uh, better real 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 building information within the data, database so the score rates the building's performance visible on input screens to all users so you'll get that out there's no cost to that uh, activity uh, user input report, use blank version to collect data offline. So you can uh, print them out, collect the data, print final version to document data entered. And it's those are available to all users to structure the process to input the data. And there's no cost for that as well. A building EQ label report, uh, as shown on the screen here, provides visual indication of the performance score generated by a credentialed user for approved submissions. And again, there's no cost to generate that report. And the building EQ disclosure form, which presents key energy information for compliance with disclosure ordin ordinances, uh, would need to be gener generated by a credential practitioner for approved submissions. And there would be a fee for that uh, submission. Um, again, it's, it's uh, a much more involved process um, uh, to provide this disclosure, this compliance document that would, would uh, fulfill these disclosure ordinances. And then some more coming soon is audit report spreadsheets, automatically populated with information gathered during the operational assessment. Um, and this would be for use with the final audit report and would be available to credentialed users for a fee per building submission. And the building EQ database in development, um, and that's this aggregate information from submitted buildings that would allow um, for customized reporting and uh, there would be a fee per project or account for utilization of that database. So let's talk a little bit about getting started. So the in-operation building performance score, again, as we said, uh, EUI metered uh, versus EUI baseline times 100, compares that energy metered data to uh, use of candidate building to a baseline of that similar building type. And it's based on the CBEX uh, medium for building type, corrected for location hours of operation and the EUI is calculated for source energy using US national site to source factors. And there's a similar um, calculation that happens in, in Canada as well. You need your building demographics, you know, your location, which tells you what climate zone, operating hours, building area, building use type. Multi-use buildings or properties would be apportioned by percentage of the area so you can you can have buildings that are office and, and uh, research together, and then you apportion them by percentage. And the output of this data determines the EUI baseline. IEQ screening. So really, to consider energy use in a building is, is important, but not at the consequence of negatively impacting the indoor environmental quality. 
And so through this, uh, there's a review of issues, logs, and conduct documents survey. The survey is an optional feature within the system. Um, some, some organizations will, will be open to doing that, others will not. Uh, it requires representative measurements of the indoor environment, thermal comfort, lighting quality review, indoor air quality, uh, tracking any problems that are noted, understanding the ventilation rates, and uh, the HVAC system observation, making sure that the systems are being maintained properly uh, to uh, maintain a good indoor environment. The energy calculations area is metered energy. I mean, you're looking at electricity, natural gas, and possibly other forms of energy that feed into the building. Um, and uh, having metered energy use for at least the electricity and natural gas is, is very important. Uh, data exchange from portfolio manager, mentioned that before. Uh, review of utility information and output of this data determines the EUI measured to compare it to the baseline. And then this is all integrated with the ASHRAE Level 1 energy audit process. Uh, actual recommendations with estimated costs and payback come out. Uh, stand, standardized energy efficiency measures generally include building envelope, lighting, HVAC, refrigeration, energy generation, etc. So that's, that's really about uh, the system and the, the key elements that go into uh, the building energy quotient an, an analysis. Um, so it's quite a bit about the energy use, but it also comes back around to check the indoor, indoor environmental quality uh, to have a, a feather, rather robust look at each one of your buildings. So now who are the people that are credentialed users. So official submissions require a professional engineer licensed in the jurisdiction where the project is located or an ASHRAE certified provider building energy assessment professional uh, for in operating or a building energy modeling professional for the designed rating. Um, to be open and honest about this, when we first started the program in ASHRAE, those were the only two uh, certifications that would allow you to do the assessment, but that made no sense. Um, so we're relying on the professional engineers licensed in the jurisdiction uh, that have the accreditation within the professional engineering licensed uh, arena to actually uh, be able to do these uh, assessments. Now, if you're not a professional engineer in the jurisdiction uh, having the right credentials, um, you can get certified and, and get recognition of build, ability to deliver components of the EQ rating. Uh, the certification uh, demonstrates understanding of respective body of, no, of work and knowledge, uh, keeps that understanding current through professional development. There's ongoing professional development under these ratings, allows use of building EQ certified provider logos and aligns with DOE Better Buildings Workforce Guidelines. Uh, the Building Energy Assessment Professional is one of those uh, accredited programs. And ANSI, the, the accreditation is also uh, following ANSI accreditation for both the, the Building Energy Professional and Building Energy Modeling Professional. So that's it for the uh, advertisement. So the building energy assessment professional allows the individual to uh, audit and analyze building, determine project scope and collect data, analyze building performance, interpret results, evaluate alternatives and recommended energy efficiency measures, and assist with energy efficiency measure implementation. Whereas the modeling professional uh, really evaluates, um, chooses use, calibration, interpretation of it, results of energy modeling software and the competence to model new and existing building the systems in a full range of physics. So where is the building EQ program going? Um, so ASHRAE in the individual buildings area, 
uh, ASHRAE members using the building EQ to evaluate individual buildings is one of our areas of growth, um, which uh, the value added to the to the program from that is uh, member price on credential ver verification one-time setup fee, so you get a reduced setup fee, and credential verification fee waived for certified providers. So it's a good way for our ASHRAE members to get out into their communities and provide a service uh, that adds value to uh, reducing the building energy waste and improving the indoor environment. Typically that outreach is through our grassroots organization, our chapters uh, across North America and uh, throughout uh, the globe. Institutional buildings, universities, organizations, campuses, uh, really, the value added is multiple projects entered into system database, reviewed data for entire building inventory. So that gives you a chance to have your whole building inventory, if it's uh, 10 buildings or, or 100 buildings. And uh, what's really good about this particular area is where ASHRAE and APP are working very closely uh, on this program, um, trying to make it of value to our members, both the APA members and the ASHRAE members which I'm sort of on both sides of, and, uh, and provide some useful tools to the industry. And finally, that we don't overlook the state and federal governments, municipalities, utilities, and, and we can create customized portals to meet specific needs of those customers. And uh, that means that if, if a, a state or, or municipality wants to have a, have a rating methodology for all the buildings in their area, we can create a portal that's the, the city of XYZ's uh, building, e efficient, building energy efficiency rating methodology based on the building EQ. So that's one other area that we can, can help uh, municipalities and governments uh, get organized in that area as well. And of course, there's the, uh, some other developments. Uh, there is a new ASHRAE University course. This was actually developed by one of our uh, members that's uh, an academic at, at a university, uh, Tim Wentz. And the course name is Benchmarking Assessment of Energy Performance in Existing Buildings. And it's a university or college senior level undergraduate or graduate course that has been developed by ASHRAE, um, covers building energy audit and analysis using the building EQ as a learning framework and the students experience project-based learning through hands-on engineering and real buildings under the guidance of industry professionals. And this is a, a, an opportunity where in the universities, you can actually uh, work with your academic side to, to get this course uh, underway. It, sort of experiential learning is, I don't, is a big thing right now uh, in, our, in our academic world in Canada, for sure. Uh, and I think it's pretty consistent uh, in North America. And this provides a really good experiential learning and we find ways to link up the chapters, engineers and, and uh, technologists with, uh, with the uh, academic side so that we can get that, uh, enhance that experiential learning with uh, real uh, professionals in the industry. So it's an opportunity if, uh, if anybody would like to explore that then you can uh, let us know and, and we'll find a way to set it up for you. Now, um, the other area that, um, that we have that, that may be of interest to a number of the APA members is, uh, is some of our educational programs. And so ASHRAE has a, a, a group of programs and uh, the first area I'm gonna just quickly talk about is instructor-led training. And uh, one of the areas is operation and maintenance of high performance buildings. So this is a, a, a six hour uh, module and uh, it's, it's instructor led. So it's um, face to face training and uh, it's available. And th this is one of the things that we're, th we're talking about bringing into, uh, into the, the APA, APA Institute as, as a module. Um, so operation maintenance, high performance buildings. There's also improving existing building operation uh, as part of ASHRAE's HVAC design and operation offerings. And there's also the fundamentals of building operation maintenance and management. 
Now, these courses um, are, are actually fairly highly uh, rated in, in the ASHRAE uh, world. Uh, but one of the things we want to do, and I, I think this is a really good opportunity between APA and ASHRAE, is make sure that we start uh, testing them with our, our APA members. And it's, it's possible that there could be enhancements to these uh, training instructor-led training programs that would really boost their uh, uh, their value to uh, the participants. So anyway, that's one area that I think we could, could really uh, work very collaboratively on. Um, another area of instructor-led training is HVAC Design Level 1 Essentials and HVAC Design Level 2 Applications. Now, that's, that's a little more directed to the design um, covers operations to a certain extent, but it's, it's, it's the des, uh, more directed to the design professionals uh, with uh, a better understanding of how things operate after they design them. But anyway, these are, are good courses to also consider uh, for, uh, for the APA, APA members as well. And then there's a number of other ones uh, in, on the energy efficiency. Again, instructor-led, building demand response, cogeneration from basics through operation, commercial building energy audits, district cooling and heating system, central plants, energy efficiency in data centers, effective energy management in new and existing buildings, energy management best practices, evaluation methods for high-performance green buildings, and IT equipment design evolution data center operation optimization. Again, these are all uh, courses that can actually be arranged to be in, uh, in your areas, uh, depending on the number of people we can sign up uh, for, the, for the program. And continuing on instructor-led, uh, environmental quality, how to avoid IAQ problems, IAQ practices. Um, we have recently, ASHRAE uh, sort of uh, uh, merged uh, with the IAQA organization into our quality association. So we have some chances here that we've uh, sort of enhanced some of these uh, programs in, on the environmental quality. We have humidity control and, uh, and then you get into HVA CNR applications, air to air energy recovery, air to air uh, uh, energy recovery fundamentals, design operating high performance healthcare systems, and that uh, the healthcare area is done in collaboration with the healthcare association. Uh, you can get into BACnet um, performance of dedicated outdoor air systems <clears throat> and mathematical optimization techniques um, for uh, HVAC systems and components. And then we have. Uh, a number of years back, ASHRAE created a e-learning um, foundation, and uh, so these are web-based or on-demand. You can you can sign up for them and, and take them right online. And we have uh, e-learning on on central plants, commissioning, um, a lot on the controls of uh, basic electricity, building control, central plant control, DDC networks and protocols. So these are all available online at a, a fee. Uh, and continuing on controls, you can see we have a bit of an emphasis on controls in our in our program, um, but they uh, they are generally speaking useful. Uh, and and these ones you can sort of do at your own pace, sort of on demand at your pace as well. Uh, controls, uh, diagrams, electric controls. HVAC uh, pneumatic controls, for those of you that still have a few of those on campus, um, sensors. So that's uh, an overview of, uh, of the ASHRAE uh, educational programs that may be of interest. Um, you can access uh, more information on all those online at, uh, at the ASHRAE website, uh, ashrae.com.org. And you can find the building EQ uh, at that also. Um, so that's uh, 
That's that's it for my presentation, and I think we're in fairly good shape for any questions that you might have. Well, Dara, we appreciate you taking time, and uh, we definitely have a lot of questions coming in. Uh, and so the collaboration effort between APA and ASHRAE has just been outstanding and continues expanding. Uh, one of the questions came in, in terms of ASHRAE as an organization, uh, just go over the size and how many countries are you in? And you have a strong focus on local state chapters, student chapters. If you can talk a little further about that, because that's a great opportunity for our facilities professionals, as we have a lot of folks who are leaving our industry due to retirement. Oh, sure. I can, I can give you an update on, uh, on uh, sort of the ASHRAE global community. So right now we have uh, just under 57,000 members. Uh, we, we don't have corporate members. It's all our members are individual members. Uh, we have members in, in 130 plus countries. Uh, 11,000 of these members are outside of North America, outside of the uh, United States and Canada. Um, we now have uh, 14 regions, 180 chapters with 280 student chapters, student branches that, that we call them. Um, so there's, there's lots of student branches. I, I will say that the student branches sort of ebb and flow. Um, they're very strong for periods of time, then they sort of weaken a bit, and then they, they seem to come back to life. Uh, we just approved, had a meeting today where we just approved another six student branches um, around, around the world. So that's, that's the sort of dimension of, uh, of ASHRAE. Perfect. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, again, we love the partnership. We have folks uh, all the way from uh, our Pacific PC app all the way to our Serapa and our Eastern on the line here. So a lot of questions coming in. One of the questions we have that has come in uh, is regarding uh, Scott here is looking at the, the credentialings. Uh, if you're a certified energy manager, uh, you mentioned you need a PE to be a PE or other certification. Uh, but as a certified energy manager, would that qualify to go ahead and do the BEQ uh, program? Uh, it does not at this time. Okay. Uh, are you looking at it uh, as being a possibility? or? Um, I can't actually answer that. Uh, the, the building EQ uh, committee is, is looking at a number of ways that we can expand the participation uh, and I'm just not personally aware of whether that's in the discussion or not. Okay. You, you mentioned the BEQ is doing level one energy audits. And so we have folks, uh, Jody Sweet from our Sir Rapper region. We appreciate questions that come in from that area. So the level one energy audit is for the BEQ. Uh, what other levels of audits are there? Twos and threes? And can you explain those a little bit more detail? Yeah. So the, the level one is... Uh, and you can get a much more uh, a detailed explanation on our ASHRAE website. But level one is that uh, it's like a uh, a walk a walk through building audit where you're you're looking at uh, the types of systems that are there and comparing them to uh, systems that are more energy efficient and documenting uh, those opportunities. Uh, and some of the opportunities come from how the building's operated. If you've got a building that's occupied from eight in the morning till five in, in the evening, but it's operating 24 seven. I mean, that's gonna be a rather obvious uh, issue that'll come through in the audit. So they, they allow you to get a sense of the opportunities in the building. Uh, generally speaking, when you, when you go and you wanna actually invest in the building, you'll do a much more detailed audit, uh, which uh, that would be a level two audit where you go into the building and you, you really analyze the various systems uh, much more thoroughly and then put together real estimates of, uh, not order of magnitude estimates, but real estimates for the work that could be done and the resulting savings. Uh, but the, uh, the level one audit is relatively easy to do, uh, gives you a very good snapshot if you follow the process properly of, of doing it. Uh, we use it uh, at our campus. We have like an energy master plan where we audit all our buildings at that level one to get a sense of the opportunity. And then we say, oh, this is a good building. Uh, seems to have a good opportunity. Then you go in with a more detailed audit. Excellent. 
Now, you mentioned a great, great uh, item there regarding the level ones, twos, and threes, and really it ties into student engagement. And Mike Hoffman and our Rocky Mountain Association uh, has put a question about the student engagement involving uh, students for sustainability. Uh, can you talk a little bit further about the great opportunities that exist there? Uh, in, in, in utilization of the building EQ, uh, there's tremendous opportunities. Uh, I know we talked about the uh, the credit course opportunity, and and uh, sometimes that's not easy to get into play, uh, but you can definitely engage students uh, in a non-credit course experiential learning opportunity with engaging them with the, the professionals doing the audits uh, to oversee the, the students actually doing the audits. Uh, we did that uh, uh, at our at our campus here, and and found it to be very very useful. We actually did it with a group of students that were engineers and business students, and uh, also uh, students from uh, arts and social sciences that were looking at the uh, at the uh, evolution of uh, sustainability and and how it impacts people's thoughts about the world and all that. And uh, the three three groups worked together to audit and provide business cases with rationales why one should do this work and invest money in these facilities. So it's a, a huge opportunity for students to, to find out uh, how, how life really works in buildings and what you can do to uh, reduce the waste energy and improve the environment. Excellent, great, great opportunity for our students as they, as they become future engineers. You know, you know, one of the questions that's come in is regarding our actionable recommendations that you mentioned for improving the building energy performance of, and you have the older buildings and newer newer research type buildings. The BEQ can, can be used on both our aged buildings, in some cases 40, 50, 60 years old, and also our newer buildings? Absolutely, and uh, it, it's interesting in, in the older buildings, uh, sometimes they, they degrade and you have to spend money in there to get the systems back to working effectively. And, and oftentimes in the newer buildings, you'll find that when you, you do these audits, you're finding that the way they're being operated uh, is not the most effective. And sometimes that's a result of the complexity of the newer buildings uh, and, the, <laughs> and the older buildings tend to have lack of, lack of the complexity, but then they have the older systems that, that can give you improved uh, operations and savings and, and the better environment. So they're, they're, they're sort of, they're different but the uh, the auditing and, and the evaluation can help you with both. Excellent. T Tony Guerrero uh, is online from Seattle, Washington. Uh, also our our vice president of treasurer and member membership at uh, APA. He's asking the question regarding the database, the EQ, the EUI score. Uh, can you explain a, a little bit more? What does that mean? And is that available to be used throughout all who are involved in it, entering the portal so they can really rank themselves against their peers? Yeah, so right now the EUI comes from, uh, from the existing system CBEX. Uh, so it's, it's, it's available uh, through, uh, actually just comes through the CBEX. We use the CBEX uh, data. Um, what I talked about there also was the fact that we want to have our own data that we can start comparing to as we as we actually populate the system with better and better data about buildings in the different climate zones um, and uh, have a have a good database of our own. Uh, but right now we use the EUI from the, from the CBEX. The uh, the other thing that um, and this this is really an ASHRAE APA thing that uh, is worthy of consideration. This, this could actually be a, a basis for uh, the building evaluation, energy evaluation within the uh, facility performance indicators uh, system. Um, once we have the database, a sufficient database, that might be a very good way uh, to uh, connect into our FPI system. Excellent. We have, we have a question here from Solomon. Uh, we, Continue uh, sending your questions. We got a lot of them are coming in. We have so many questions, we may not have enough time. But Daryl, do you have a way, does ASHRAE have a way 
to adjust the baseline, for example, for a lab that is housing maybe 10 fume hoods versus a lab that may be housing 100? Well, right, right now in the system, and of course, uh, as we said, there's enhancements coming along. Right now in the system, you'd have to do that with a percentage of, uh, of uh, wet lab facilities in a building. Uh, so you'd have uh, the, the, the ones with the fume hoods would be the sort of high energy lab category uh, versus the other areas would be low energy use laboratories. Uh, that's about the only way you could do it right now. And then we have a question, thank you, Daryl. Uh, we have another question from Lee Harding. Is there a resource for identifying any non-regulated building types, types where a BQ would not be done, for example? Um, I can't think of any. And, and so would there be some buildings that, uh, you, you talked about meterings and how important that is. Mm -hmm. uh, that if a building is not metered uh, within your overall portfolio of campus buildings, uh, would you not want to include those and just focus on the overall metered buildings? Well, obviously you're going to get your best bang at the at the metered buildings, but um, my my own personal view on this, uh, with the uh, level one energy audit, you're going to get uh, sufficient information on the buildings, even if they're not metered. Uh, and you can do some spot metering that will validate uh, that these are the buildings that you should not worry about or you should worry about. And then if, if you zero in on the buildings that are, have the greatest potential, then it may make sense for you to invest in at, at least a, a period of metering, sub-metering uh, for a period of time or, or permanent. So the BEQ, even though you don't have metered data, and be that uh, roadmap to which buildings you spend the money on to get meter data. Well, Darren, I, I think that's a great point because if you can't measure it, you can improve it. And you need to have the meters on the buildings uh, for a number of factors. A number of our universities are taking federal grants. Uh, they get audited on a, a four to six year cycle. Uh, it's critical when they get audited, they can measure their utilities so they can make sure they're getting the proper return back on those grants. Uh, so th that's a critical part too. Uh, ASHRAE certifications, we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the certification and online training programs, uh, but hang on, we got more questions coming on on the BEQ, so let me not, not leave that yet. The zero net energy usage, you talked about that in the building. Uh, measuring allows you to have an idea where you're going. Is it possible to have a zero emission, zero producing, net energy producing building or overall campus? Uh, well, you have to understand the term net. So in a zero net energy building, it, it means that you have generate sufficient energy at the building that it, even though you'll use energy from the, the grid, I'll just use that as an example, you're generating on an annual basis enough energy at the building that it nets out to zero. Um, so you could have a net zero energy campus uh, by generating a, enough energy by solar or um, biomass that, that you're, you're generating enough energy that it offsets the energy you're taking from the utilities. But that's, that's the idea of uh, zero net or net zero. Excellent. Th thank you very much. Uh, one of the items you mentioned, the different energy uh, items that you're reviewing, the energy calculation, we didn't see anything on water there. Are you looking at adding that to the future audits or is this more in terms of overall electricity and gas that the building's using? Um, well, it is focused on electricity and gas. Uh, um, water, water has been discussed uh, by all means. Uh, and it's becoming a critical resource uh, in North America anyway. Uh, so they're, they're looking at ways that we can, uh, can bring that into the system as well. Excellent. We have here uh, from one of our members talking about the student chapters. I'm a younger facilities manager at UNC Charlotte and also a mechanical engineering grad student. I just sought out ASHRAE to join my local chapter and joined as a student the Southern uh, Pedamid chapter. 
since I have only been in ASHRAE a few weeks, I'm curious about all the programs that may be offered in our region for student chapters to increase our chapter and also increase their overall knowledge. So, Daryl, you mentioned about the web page, and we're going to get some more BEQ questions, too. Uh, but the fact is, ASHRAE has just a wealth of offering that is going to be huge for our members as we have a large, large turnover due to retirement. Uh, the student chapters, may, maybe just touch base a little more. I know your web page is just filled with uh, opportunities for educational opportunities. Yes, and, and actually we've, we've just rolled out in the last couple of weeks a, an enhanced web page experience, we hope. <laughs> uh, the, other, the other web page we had for years was a bit uh, difficult to navigate, so we've spent a lot of time to, uh, uh, to enhance the, the web page experience, so we believe it's much easier to navigate. And there is a wealth of information on there about uh, chapters, region, educational programs, uh, uh, standards and guidelines, uh, just a, a ton of information. And really, what I would say with the student member, uh, one of the best things you can do is engage with the chapter. Not, not, um, the student branch is, is, is interesting, but it's the chapter that, uh, that's going to uh, allow you to get to know people that are, can, uh, can really help you in the future and in, in your current uh, job and uh, your future career. Um, Generally speaking, that all the chapters are very strong with their technical programs, and it's one of the things that over the years, a lot of the jobs in our industry don't actually get advertised because they uh, happen that somebody knows somebody else at the chapter meetings, and they and they get to know them and understand their capabilities, and and then the uh, the connections create opportunities. So by all means, a student member really wants to look at how, how they can get engaged in the chapter. Don, we appreciate that question. And just a, a follow-up, too, to that. Uh, can you talk a little bit further, too, about your online programs? That, that's a great offering if you're not having somebody come here, uh, come to the universities. Yeah, the online programs uh, were, uh, were created really to, uh, it's actually, it was created to actually enhance uh, our younger members' ability to, uh, to gain education without uh, traveling uh, great distances or, or even attending some of the chapter meetings. So uh, they're, they're, they're really good because you can go online, you can do part of the program, you can, you can leave, you can come back and continue it. So it's very much uh, available at, at the pace of the individual. And, uh, and you can actually, uh, uh, if you're doing something, you say, well, wait a minute, I think that was mentioned in that, that online education program, you can actually that you've signed up for, you can actually go back and, and, and re review that information. So we, we think they're very good. And as we have requests for, for new ones, we will we'll work on, on creating new ones online. Um, that program all a little bit because we, the, this technology is a, a real problem in, <laughs> in our societies and, and the, uh, the software base that we're sitting on had to be upgraded. So we, we sort of got, we're spending a lot of time migrating the old uh, programs to new software, but now we're ready to, uh, to actually go back into production. Excellent. You know, we have, we have about seven more minutes and the questions keep coming in. Uh, and maybe a, one final question regarding the educational opportunities. And this also goes to the partnership of ASHRAE and APA. Uh, as the APA board has looked in detail regarding the grad program that we had at the Institute, we're re reinventing that, uh, readjusting it. And so we're looking at that being navigating the facilities portfolio. And as Daryl has mentioned, there's a number of opportunities for operation and maintenance of high performing buildings, HVAC design level, level one and two, environmental quality, indoor air quality issues, pneumatic controls. Uh, and so we're gonna be mixing more of that technical training uh, into those who wanna continue their experience with the APA Institute. Uh, so that's going to be taking place with the partnership uh, taking place this September at the APA Institute. Uh, we have another question from Tony Guerrero, uh, Daryl. And so this one here talks about, do you also take into consideration when you're doing the BEQ, the number of people in the building or the density in the building uh, over and above the use and building hours? I actually, uh, 
haven't come across that one yet, so I can't answer that. And it's and it's a good question of if the building isn't on controls, it's just not the measurement of the the actual electricity in the building. Uh, there's high volume, and so we'll be coming back to that down the way. Uh, we're getting a lot of positive feedback again, Don. Thanks. I'm glad you enjoy uh, for your your knowledge. Uh, we're getting they love the webinar. Don's really enjoying it, so we appreciate that. Uh, and Tony also talks about there is a net, a zero net energy building in Seattle uh, that they built recently. And another question from Tony. Tony's on a roll here. Uh, <laughs> and so, and you know, Tony, uh, yep. will the building EQ system be different from the existing DOE Energy Star program? And actually, that one's also coming from Rob Richards. Well, it, it, the main difference is it's uh, more comprehensive in that you uh, that you do the audit so that you you have this not only do you have a rating for the building, but you have like a roadmap for improving the building from both an energy point of view and indoor quality. Uh, and I'll just go back to that one about the number of occupants. Actually, we, you do actually review the number of occupants as it relates to the indoor environment in terms of ventilation rates, and that's that. In, that's one area that uh, the number of occupants would come into the uh, equation. Excellent. You know, with a couple other questions coming in last four minutes here. We have Freddie here. Freddie, uh, in the military, we appreciate your service. He's at one of the bases. And so Freddie says, hi, I'm in a base in the Caribbean. Uh, and now you're talking about it being too cold there, Freddie. We're not sure how that happens if you're in the Caribbean. Uh, but what he goes on to say is one of the complaints we get is that some of our buildings is too cold when we when a change is made and too hot. What do you recommend or advice, a solution that we can have? And so it's taken the BEQ to the level, is the building being as efficient? Are they using the controls properly? Uh, do you want to comment on that, seeing that you're from Canada there? <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know. It sounds almost like he has a, a two-pipe changeover system uh, like we have here. And, and in the spring and the fall, uh, you can never get, to, never get the system to operate properly because you're either heating when you should be cooling or cooling when you should be heating. But the BEQ would come into uh, utilizing its uh, sort of whole assessment of the building, would look at the operations and how they impact on that indoor environment. You know, it's too cold, so you're over-conditioning air conditioning the space or you're uh, overheating it at other times of the year. So it would actually come into, into that and how you're actually controlling and, and how your system's making decisions about how they operate the building uh, for the uh, maintenance of that indoor environment. Thank you. And actually that was Bertlin Carter, Bertlin Carter uh, at a base in the Caribbean. So Bertlin, again, thank you for your military service. Just on a side note, APA just recently assigned a memo of understanding with SAMI, the Society of American Military Engineers, that will partner our two databases when we have open positions. A large number of military members are retiring, leaving the service, and we're putting them in line with open positions within our universities, colleges, and K through 12. Uh, Freddie, though, did have a question regarding our database, Daryl, and the benchmarking available. Uh, how much is in there currently uh, that they can take a look at? And I know it's expanding every day. Yeah, I had that uh, slide up there a while back. Um, I, think I think there's it was 144 approximately. 144 buildings, and and part of you know, and getting back to that, part of our the the sort of win-win of of APA and Ashley working together in this area is that. We'll have a much more, uh, better uh, database for a APA to use, and then the APA buildings will fill out the ASHRAE database and make it more powerful for all the users. And uh, right now at 144 buildings, it's really not enough uh, buildings to make it really meaningful. But, but as we work together, we can definitely run those numbers up to a meaningful number. Um, well, Sure, we've uh, run out of time here. Uh, we do appreciate your time. Any final thoughts before we say a few final closing words? Well, just from the ASHRAE point of view, uh, our current president has been about extending our community and technology. The next president is going to be about connected buildings and and utilities and connections and, and, and uh, how the buildings respond to environmental challenges. 
Uh, and in my presidential year, it's going to be about how buildings operate effectively and contribute positively to the indoor environment and the working environment. So I, I think we're very aligned with uh, issues that are important to, to APA. So that's my wrap up comment. Well, Daryl, uh, we appreciate very much you taking time. We appreciate your service to APA. Uh, we're very excited to see you go into your, your positions at ASHRAE. Uh, you understand the facilities, you understand the construction side of the house. Uh, with, with making our buildings more efficient as we have a number of our buildings are getting older uh, by millions of square feet over the next uh, several decades. So we appreciate that. Uh, those who are on the line here who have gotten their certifications uh, from APA, uh, that's, uh, if you haven't, look into it as our facilities profession continues expanding. Uh, this uh, course, this uh, webinar uh, is available for CEU, so you can contact APA for that. Uh, we continue doing these webinars on a monthly basis. They've been a big hit. We're getting a lot of folks who are coming. We hadn't, didn't have a chance to talk to everybody on the line, uh, Ted from Purdue and, and others. Uh, however, they're every Thursday, the last Thursday of every month. The uh, next one will be on March 29th. It's 12 o'clock, uh, 1 p.m. Arizona time. We're having Asad Abloy talk about the virtual design tour of sustainability solutions and addressing our entrances uh, keyless access, keeping our buildings safe, uh, keeping our students safe at all times. Uh, April, we're going to have a very exciting webinar on, in the last Thursday in April. It's going to be the University of Arizona students, our students for sustainability, talking about overall student engagement that ranges the course from our waste reduction to energy reduction to marketing of our sustainability efforts. We roll into May looking at from U.S. Energy Connect roadmap to net zero and then we have Henry Johnstone right here from Tucson, Arizona, talking about the importance of developing a utility roadmap. And so the presentations continue. This has been a very successful. We look forward to giving back to our members on a routine basis. And Daryl, thank you again. Stay warm in Canada. And we look forward to seeing you in our future travels, Daryl. And thank you very much from all of us at APA. We appreciate it very much. Oh, thank you. My 